Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Mr. Clifton Ryan. Uh, greetings. When this Hall of Fame was uh, conceived in 2002, I put it on my goal list. I guess I can mark it off. Uh, I always tried my best to be a great representation of this city and this county. I always tried to, I always kept in mind wherever I went, wherever I played, that I was a representation of you guys. So I thank you for rewarding me with, from my hard work with, with the votes and getting me on the, first off, getting me on the ballot, board of directors and people in charge of that stuff. And secondly, the, the voters rewarding my representation of the county and of you guys. I appreciate that. Uh, my journey started at a young age. Uh, I was a sports fanatic my whole life, still to this day. Uh, my grandfather, Ryan, Cliff Ryan, used to tease me because I used to remember everybody's statistics, who played where, who was doing what. I just gravitated towards sports at my earliest memory. And uh, I grew up watching guys in Saginaw. I grew up watching guys like Sam Sward every Saturday, and they talked about his leadership. I grew up watching Marv, and I remember Marv had a big game at Spartan Stadium against Michigan. I wanted to be like those guys. I strived every day during the course of my career to be like them. I wanted to emulate them. Guys like Mark Macon, you know, they set the bar high. I want to reach it and exceed it. My career, my youth career started at St. Stephen's, the undefeated Titans. We never lost a game. I scored defensive touchdowns. We beat up on St. Josephats, you Carlton people over there. Uh, I played for a coach over there by the name of Coach Schulte, who ran a very tight ship. It was like we were a high school, sometimes a college team, and we had a great coaching staff, and they seen some in me. I remember the seventh grade, the seventh grade, Coach Nick Alfano said, you're going to play Division One football. I'm like, well, what you talking about? But as I progressed, I've been, I, I began to believe it, and I got better and better. But my ninth grade year, I, I had a kind of, I was kind of delusional. I didn't play football until midway through the season. Uh, Coach Will Rogers, uh, he came and got me and put me on the football team, so I played half a game, of, half a season of freshman, and I dominated, because I thought I was a basketball player. I was 6'2 with a ninth grade. I, I'm thinking I'm 6'2, I'm 14. I'm gonna be at least 6'8, 6'9, you know? <laughs> It didn't happen. So uh, Coach Dave Ward pushed me that whole half a season of freshman. He was like, you know, you really can play varsity if you just lock in. So I locked in. And uh, Coach Jones was my tech ed teacher. I used to sneak off to his class. I'd get a, a hall pass to go to the restroom. I'd go talk to Coach Jones for 20 minutes and just soak up whatever he had to tell me. And Coach, I want to let you know, like, I know we don't talk as much, but you're the reason I stayed at Arthur Hill. You one of the main reasons I went to Arthur Hill. A lot of people tried to get me to transfer to different schools. Right. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> but I was loyal to you. You know, we we had some we we took we we made some we had some tough losses. If the ball bounces our way a few more times, we go to the playoffs two three years in a row. But I went down fighting with you, and I appreciate you for, for, for sticking with me, letting me showcase my skills. You let me play any position I wanted. I, you let me try to kick. You let me do anything. <laughs> you know, and I and. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I appreciate I appreciate you for that. Uh, my basketball coach is here, Dave Slager. Coach Slager made me a leader. You know, as Coach McMahon said in the video, I got moved up to varsity as a vars as a sophomore for basketball, and I was a great vars varsity player as a sophomore. 
And my attitude kind of got kind of bad my junior year. I want to say I was so competitive and like I felt like the team wasn't meet, reaching my standards and I didn't know how to express it. So <laughs> Coach Slaggard, uh, he sat me down in his office one day and he gave me an ultimatum. Either you're going to be a leader, because they say you're this big time football player, or I'm going to kick you off the team because you a jerk. <laughs> so uh, the end of the story is I ended up being elected a captain with two other great young men, Freddie Jackson and Devondre Woodson. And that team ended up winning the district title. No offense, Coach Thomas. Y'all beat us by 60 to open the season. But we did beat y'all in the district championship and ended, ended your season that year. Uh, that was one of my best high school accomplishments and athletic accomplishments. And I thank you, Coach Slag, for you know, instilling that leadership in me. And one more coach who I want to recognize that's here, I think he's still here, is my first ever coach, Jim J James Scott. James was my T-ball coach at Hoyt Park. <laughs> from, from the time I was four to six, or maybe a little older, and I suck, but James wouldn't stop coming to my house to pick me up. <laughs> but I didn't know what James was doing. James was instilling in me a never quit attitude. Because a lot of those guys was two, three years older than me that beat me up, beat me and his son Marcus up, because Marcus was, he was a smaller guy. And they would, they would just terrorize me. And for three straight years, James would be at my grandmother's house to pick me up and to drive me off. He never asked for gas. And I think that's why, that prepared me for all the turmoil that I went to at, through at Michigan State uh, and St. Louis with the Rams. That prepared me. And I appreciate him for that. I think the music is playing, so I got to get ready to sit down. <laughs> but before I sit down, I got a couple guys that's been with me through thick and thin, through my dark times, through my ups and downs, you know, through my injury. You know, I, I was a diagnosis post-concussive post syndrome, and I'm really not just getting under, over it. A lot of you guys ask me what I'm doing now, what I've been up to. I've been fighting that battle, because that can last anywhere from 30 days to the rest of your life. So that's what I've been up to, you know, focusing on that and raising my daughter, Sierra, who's here. And uh, last, I just wanna, I wanna recognize Alex Barron, he took me under his, his wing when I was a rookie at St. Louis. I, I love you, bro. I appreciate you. Thank you for everything. I want to thank Tremonte Pointer, David Heron, my Michigan State brothers. They talked me off, off the ledge many times. I was on my way back to Saginaw. I was going to give it up. But they, but they stuck with me. I want to thank my childhood friends, Delvin Crudup and Byron Brewer. I want to thank my best friend for over 20 years who drove all the way here from East Atlanta. We've been through, through so much together. We, he lived at Michigan State, State with me. He was my first friend when I moved into the city from Buena Vista Township. My boy, my brother, my friend, Andre Lamar Brown. In closing, I want to thank you for recognizing me for this, for this gracious Hall of Fame with so much history, with so much talent. I'm humbled, I'm honored, I'm so appreciative, and I'll see you guys next year. Woo!